It has stood the test of time. God's book, the Bible, still relevant in today's complex world. It is written, sharing messages of hope around the world. I want to welcome you to the It Is Written Canada television program. My name is Bill Santos. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, if you were with us last week, you already know who our guest is this week. Uh, but if you weren't with us, let me introduce Jamie George. Jamie, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be back. It's good to have you back. Uh, for the benefit of those that don't know Jamie, who is a, not an unknown commodity in Canada, because you have been on Canadian television quite a bit, uh, Jamie is a world-renowned concert violinist. That's quite the introduction, isn't it? Whew, man, I should pay <laughs> you for this. And, uh, but more importantly than his, I think, talent at playing the violin is his, uh, his heart for mission and to see people winning, uh, winning people to, to Jesus Christ. And so uh, last week we got a sense of a little background of your life. And um, I thought it'd be important this week to, to sort of, with your permission, you know, to delve into one aspect of your life that you identified as one of the most trying moments in your life, which was the breakdown of your marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I believe, Jamie, it's not to, you know, it's not the air, you know, dirty laundry or anything, but I believe that, you know, your testimony and your experience can benefit someone that's watching us uh, here Amen. today. Um, maybe just a very quick, for the benefit of those who may are tuning in for the first time, very quick bio mm -hmm. on, on, on who you are and where you're from. Okay, well, born in Cuba, uh, started playing the violin at the age of five. When I was 10 years old, uh, my family was fortunate to be able to leave Cuba and go to the United States, uh, where I received a Christian education and continued uh, taking violin lessons. And over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege to travel around the world because music is the international language. Yes. The violin doesn't need translation. Yes, you're absolutely right. Everybody understands it. The only continent I haven't been to is Antarctica. Uh, wow. And I don't think I'm going to be doing a concert for the penguins anytime <laughs> soon. You never know. Right? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so I get to um, travel around and share the gospel through music and testimony. So last week uh, uh, I asked you, uh, you know, any regrets? We talked about some of the highlights you mentioned playing in a hut church in yes. Mexico. and watching some folks as you played give their life to Jesus Christ and uh, you said that was one of the highlights of, yes, your, of your ministry and uh, I sort of follow that up and on a sort of unintentional I hope I didn't put you <laughs> on the spot you know well were there any regret, you know, regrets and you made reference to the, the the breakdown of your marriage yes and uh, that's sort of what prompted this uh, this discussion today what happened man well I can tell you it wasn't anything bombastic right it wasn't any one thing. It was a gradual breakdown of the relationship. Uh, and for those that have been married or that are married, marriage is work. Yes. Now, it is a good work, but it's not something you can sit back and kick your feet up and just because things were good last week or the year before, you can rest on those laurels. You yes. have to continue to feed the relationship. Yes. You have to continue to devote time to nurture that relationship. And uh, what began to happen is, as the Lord blessed, and I was traveling more and doing more concerts, uh, and at first my wife traveled with me. She was also a musician, mm. and so she sang. Okay. We had a great uh, team as we went from place to place. Uh, but this uh, traveling, grueling schedule can uh, break people down physically. Yes. Uh, and I've spent 25 years doing it, and sometimes I get sick, sometimes yes. I get worn out. Um, and she certainly sort of got tired. She got worn out as well, and so she started cutting back. Um, and then she had other opportunities to sing locally. Uh, we live in the Chattanooga area. Well, the country and gospel meccas are in Nashville, yes, just a yes. couple hours away, uh, and she had great opportunities. Uh, in singing Nashville and so she went there and so I began to travel more and be home less and she was spending more and more time in Nashville um, 
and over the course of time, uh, what happened was we didn't spend enough time together. We didn't work out, you know, the little things that became big things. And we just gave up. It's probably the best, you know, answer I can, I can give. We gave up. Um, and, you know, the reason why the Bible says that God hates divorce is because of the pain right. that it causes. Right. And div uh, divorce is also a symbol of the breaking down of our relationship with God mm. because our union with Him is like a marriage as well. Yes. Um, and so uh, the pain, you know, the devastation that we both suffered, um, only I think if people have gone through it uh, can you relate because it is so deep. Yes. Uh, it is so despondent. Um, I remember uh, one period of time I went eight days without eating, My not realizing it. You know, it was such a difficult time. I didn't even get out my front door. I was hurting so bad. Um, I cried out to God. But, you know, if, if I had had my relationship with the Lord in the right place, I would have listened to Him saying, take time to devote to your marriage. Because doing God's work never takes the place of taking care of your family. Mm. Sometimes we can be so busy doing God's work that yeah. we can forget to do the things that He has called us to do first and foremost. And that's what happened. And uh, the years went by and the pain didn't go away. Um, the, the nights alone, you know, crying and, 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 and crying out to God and, and blaming God. Because what happens is you say, well, why did you let this happen to me, God? Right. I'm here I'm doing, I'm doing a good work. I'm doing your work. Yeah. And all of a sudden my life falls apart, you yeah. know. Um, and it took a long time for my heart to heal. Uh, and yet God is in the business of healing. And God is in the business of miracles. Um, and God worked a miracle in my heart and in my life the same way He can work a miracle in anybody's life that comes to Him and says, Lord, take over my life. Yes. Um, there's a song that I want to share coming up and it's called I Surrender All. And I have learned that the best place we can be is surrendered to Jesus Christ. I used to love the saying that goes like this, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Because mm. I used to think that if I could just get my hands on the situation or the problem, you could fix I it. could fix it. But you know, when I look in the rearview mirrors of my life, when I'm in control is when things have been disastrous. Mm. But when God has been in control, it's a totally different thing. It's amazing how wonderful. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be challenges. Yes. But we have this peace knowing that God is really the one carrying us. And that's how I want to live my life every day. You know, you know Jamie, you're a... Uh well-known musician. I mean, you've, you, you, like you said, you've traveled around the world and uh, doing a magnificent work for God. And you were under attack from the devil. The enemy wanted to do whatever he could to destroy Certainly. your ministry, your wife's ministry, your ex-wife's ministry. And uh, you, you mentioned last week that you actually, as you were going through this painful separation process, you actually considered... Uh, abandoning your ministry. Yes. Um, and, it, and I think it's, it's so, sort of natural, you know? Yes. Um, people sometimes look at those who are up front and think and expect and project that everything is perfect. perfect. Yeah. Uh, things are not. And yeah. I didn't want to project something that I was not or somebody that I was not. But, you know, I think it was the devil saying to me, yes. You're a loser. Yes, yes. You're a fake. Yes. You don't have any business yes. getting up there in front of people and telling them. But you know what? It's those people that have experienced God's grace yes. that can share that with others because there are others that are hurting silently out there. Now, there are others who don't know where to go. You know, I didn't know where to turn to. I was afraid. What if somebody finds out I'm having right. problems? Yes. And so I didn't know who I could talk to yes. or where I could go. And eventually we did go to counseling, but, you know, those things didn't help. Unfortunately, you need Christian counselors that can help. Yes. Uh, we need, you know, there are, there are things that churches have set in place to help. Um, I sort of, sort of recoiled. You know, and hid uh, in a cave, and that only made things worse. We need to be able to help others and share. We need to be able to talk about it openly. I, I, I want to pick up on that, but uh, I want to take a quick break now. 
uh, because uh, earlier uh, you had the chance to, to, to tape some songs, and I believe now we're going to listen to I Surrender yes. All. Well, that was beautiful. We're going to get a chance to hear another one, another number from you a little bit later. But uh, a couple of things. I, one thing I want to say to you, I um, I commend you on your honesty, man, mm -hmm. and your openness. And uh, um, I think uh, you're doing a lot of good as I you open so. up and, and 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 share some of this that you went through. I, that's my desire: is for people to be able to be blessed, um, to be able to be encouraged. Uh, and again, to point to Jesus Christ as our only answer, as our only solution, as our only hope. I have to tell you that I sometimes I'm afraid that our churches are not places where we can come and be as honest as we would like to be yeah. for fear that someone might think that I'm having problems. But if we could foster within our, within our churches, within our church communities, uh, you know, uh, an environment where I could come, you know, we're afraid to sometimes tell that I spent the whole night crying over right. an issue in my life and because should I share that with my friends in my church that lest they're going to think I'm weak? Exactly. And so um, you're doing a lot of good, man. And so God, you know, God bless you. Praise the Lord. But it, it is, you know, it is, a, it, is a, it is a challenge. I mean, you are, you are up front. You are there. And you're right. People are looking up to you. And the devil is hammering on you saying, you know, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's right. And you know what? We're not worthy. <laughs> Jesus but is. Jesus is worthy, Amen. and that's what, and that's the promise that uh, that we claim. And uh, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, your that aspect of your life has had a, a happy uh, resolution. Yes. Uh, why don't you share a little bit with our viewers okay. about that? And uh, okay, 
Well, for nearly nine years, um, I basically gave up. Um, I looked for other things to take up my time. I worked hard, I traveled, I spent time with family and friends. I did good things, you know. Um, but it wasn't until I believe that I came before the Lord and I said, Lord, the only thing I really need in my life is you. Hmm. That he opened up a door that hadn't opened before. Hmm. Um, you know, I certainly uh, tried. Uh, I, I, I um, pursued uh, a relationship. I uh, gave it a try, but, you know, nothing was working. And so right. I said, you know what, I'm going to focus on pursuing God. Hmm. Um, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Precisely right. And when I did, uh, God healed my heart because I told my mother uh, 18 months ago, I am never getting married again, mother. I said, I'm going to marry my violin. <laughs> I spend, you know, so many days on the road already with the violin. That's right. I said, uh, she makes beautiful music. She only talks back when I tell her to. <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to focus on on that and I'm going to focus on family and friends and, and uh, I'm, you know, my, my life is full. And she said, that's great. Just don't close the door to what God may have for you. Right. Um, and I put it away in the back of my mind. That's just my mother talking, you know, that she means well. Um, but indeed, as the Lord worked in the right ways in my heart, because everything He does is right, um, He brought me to the place where I was ready. And I met a young lady three years ago at a concert. Uh, just like many people that I meet, nothing happened for months and then we exchanged some communication on Facebook. Uh, I saw her, I visited her because she was nearby where I lived. We spent a little time together uh, but I didn't think of anything else. She, she was a professional women's football player and I'm talking about American football, not wow. soccer football. Wow. So when I saw her face to face and we talked, she's a wonderful, sweet young lady but the prospect of having somebody put on her uniform and run me over and tackle me if I did something wrong. I was like, you know, maybe I don't want to mess with this. And so a little time went by, uh, a year and a half as a matter of fact, and um, it was in September of 2012 that uh, out of the blue, um, I was doing some concerts in Hawaii and I went to her Facebook page and she had a picture uh, of the beach in Puerto Rico where she was and I thought, oh, Hey, I'm at the beach, she's at the beach. So I sent her a little text message saying, I hope you're having a wonderful time, you know. And she texts back and we began to talk. And um, in, in the next couple of months, as we communicated more, we both realized that the Lord was doing something uh, in our hearts and in our lives to bring us together. She had also gone through a very sad divorce. Um, she had given her heart to the Lord years before. Wow. So this was a, a new phase for her mm -hmm. as well. But we were both scared when you've had your heart broken, when you've suffered so much, you don't want to jump into something. Yes. But we prayed and we said, Lord, if this is your will, open the doors. And you know, he did in an amazing way. Now at my age, I certainly don't have to be, you know, calling or writing and waiting and seeing. When I knew that this is what the Lord had for me, man, I went after her and I told her, I'm gonna pursue you until you tell me to go away. <laughs> And she said, all right. And I did, and the Lord brought us together. And uh, in July uh, of 2013, um, this year, we got married. Oh, to God's um, glory. Man. And He is calling us, thank you. He has brought us together and equipped us perfectly so that we could do ministry together. With her background as a professional athlete, she has a passion for inviting people to live their lives to the fullest, to serve God. Uh, to the fullest. Yes. And so we want to encourage couples to stay together, to do the things we're doing, to keep the marriage alive and happy and, 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 and uh, burning yes. uh, for the Lord and, and, and with the right love that He's yes. placed in our hearts. And to also encourage people, eat right, exercise right, so yes. that you can have more energy and more capacity to serve the Lord in everything uh, that you do. Uh, I mean, isn't it incredible how God, uh, we have a saying in Portuguese, and I, I don't know if you have it in Spanish, that says, you know, God can write straight even though the lines may be crooked, yes. right? <laughs> yes. And so, you know, the devil, and I believe with all my heart it was the devil that brought this into your life, that destroyed your marriage. Anything that involves separation, it can't be from God. Mm -hmm. But how God healed 
and has brought the two of you together and now the two of you can speak to this reality that is a, is a plague in our society today. Yeah. Marriage is breaking down, yeah. it's, 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 it's a tragedy. And you can speak to that at a, at a level that I can't because, I mean, thankfully, and I hope Thank I never have to go through that, you know, right. through Jamie, you know, what, what you've right. gone through, Jamie. Um, you know, because, and I have my issues and we each have our own issues, Certainly. but it's incredible to me listening to you how you just see God's hand. You say, you know, you know when you put your life in my hands, I'm going to take you and he's going to do a wonderful work yes. uh, through you and your wife yes. to um, impact many, many marriages. I, I, I believe that with all, with all my Amen. heart, man. For someone that's listening, that's going through that right now saying, yeah, man, that's for you, but that'll never happen to me. What advice would you give to someone that's sitting there in that pit of despair that you were, mm -hmm. you know, just a few short years ago? What would you say to them? Get down on your knees and ask God to be in control. Um, you know, a marriage is not everybody giving 50-50, it's everybody giving 100 mm. and 100. Um, and it's the same thing in our relationship with God. God gave it all. He gave Jesus and He's yes. still giving all. We have to give all. We can't just keep a little something for ourselves. So in a relationship and a marriage, you can't have that pride saying, I'm going to do it my way because I need to show her I'm boss. Right. No, it's all about giving. Because when we give, we receive. You know, the more time I spend with my wife, the more I romance her, the more she gives me her love. And so the yes. more we give, the more we're going to get back. And so I invite people to invest the time to spend in prayer and in laughter and singing and holding hands and doing special things to continue to make it special so that the relationship will thrive and not shrink and die. We're, we're short on time. We have another song we want to get yes. to before we leave. Uh, what is this one we're going to hear now? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Let's listen to that, Jamie.
I want to thank you, Jamie, for uh, spending these, this time with us. It's been a pleasure. And opening up and being so honest with us. And remind everyone of your website. JamieGeorge.com. You have a 25th anniversary special DVD there. It's on Blu-ray also. Yes. Folks can get it there? Yes, you bet. Okay, we're going to make sure we put a link on our website also. It is written Canada. Dot .ca uh, there there'll be a link to Jamie's website uh, there on our website you can see all of these programs are archived you can find out where the team will be appearing you can send in prayer requests every single morning the staff in our office pray over the prayer requests that come and so if you have a special prayer request get on the website send it in and you know that our staff will be praying over that the very next morning until next time remember it is written Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.